Drie minutes nummer 1498 met een uitzending van vandaag 16 december 2018. Dit is de bulletin van zondag. A major part of this bulletin will be in English. Vandaag als data vier foto's in SSTV. Jawel, autoswitching. De eerste is PD90, de andere drie PD180. Bij elkaar dus ruim 10 minuten. Daarna is er Domino EX44 op 1500 Hz. Met de copyright info van de gebruikte beeldbestanden bij SSTV. Ik hoop trouwens wel dat de SSTV door dmr.li heen komt. Probeer het anders later op de avond op de podcast of op YouTube. Dan zal ik zorgen dat de uitzending daar ook staat. This is ARRL Audio News, your weekly summary of news highlights from the world of amateur radio. If you retransmit audio news through a repeater, listen for the Morse code K character, followed by four seconds of silence. That's your cue to stop transmitting so that your repeater timer can reset. I'm Carla Pereira, KC1HSX, and this will be the final edition of Audio News for 2018. Audio News will resume on January 4th. And now, these are our stories for Friday, December 14th. The WSJTX 2.0 software suite has been released, and developer Joe Taylor, K1JT, is urging FT8 and MSK144 users to upgrade to what will become the new standard, because the FT8 and MSK144 protocols have been enhanced in a way that is not backward compatible with older versions of the program. Taylor said, quote, The new protocols became the worldwide standard starting on December 10, 2018, and all users should upgrade to WSJTX 2.0 by January 1, 2019. After that date, only the new FT8 and MSK144 should be used on the air." Unquote. The ARRL Contest Branch reports that preliminary results are now available for the 2018 ARRL November Sweepstakes CW and for the 2018 September VHF Contest at contests.arrl.org. The contest branch reminds participants that logs for the 2018 ARRL 10-meter contest are due by 2359 UTC on December 16th, and the 2018 ARRL EME contest logs are due by 2359 UTC on December 25th. The 2017 ARRL Bill Leonard W2SKE Professional Media Award for Audio Reporting was presented in New York on December 6th to the producers and staff of the radio program The Takeaway. The program, a joint production of Public Radio International, WGBH, and WNYC, aired a number of stories about amateur radio's role in supporting disaster relief agencies in Puerto Rico following Hurricane Maria. ARRL Emergency Preparedness Manager Mike Corey, KI1U, presented the Leonard Award for audio reporting to the program's executive producer, Arwa Gunja, and the show staff. The takeaway had interviewed Corey about how radio amateurs were supporting the American Red Cross's efforts to convey safety and wellness messages from the island commonwealth to relatives on the U.S. mainland. Sweden's Alexanderson Alternator Station, SAQ, has planned a Christmas Eve transmission on 17.2 kHz. The transmitter will be tuned up starting at around 0730 UTC, and a message will be transmitted at 0800 UTC. Listener reports are invited via email to info at alexander.ne.se or direct by postal mail to radio station Grimton 72, SE 43298, Grimton, Sweden. Several NASA amateur radio clubs will mark the 50th anniversary of Apollo 8 on December 21st through the 27th, concluding the year-long NASA on the Air activity, which celebrates NASA's 60th anniversary. And now with this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. On December 3rd, ExceedSat was launched. It successfully turned on and started transmitting, and was therefore issued an Oscar number of VO96 for VUSat Oscar 96. Jordan's first satellite, JY1Sat, was launched on the same rocket, 
After successful operation, it too was issued an Oscar number, J.O. 97, for Jordan Oscar 97. Unfortunately, AMSAT Oscar 95, which received its designation the day before these, has turned a deaf ear to the ground. Telemetry was successfully transmitted to the ground. However, when commands were sent to start performing other functions, the satellite decided to ignore them. In other words, the receiver is deaf. AMSAT Engineering is sifting through the telemetry data to determine if something is amiss. However, without being able to take a look under the hood, there is almost no way to determine what may have happened. AMSAT will try using some high-powered stations to see if their signals might be heard by the satellite. There's no speculation as to what may have occurred. From all of us at AMSAT, we wish you and yours a very happy holiday season, and we look forward to visiting with you again in 2019. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO, for the ARRL Audio News. I'm Steve Ford, WB8IMY, and I'm speaking with Bart Gunke, W9JJ, the ARRL Radio Sport Manager. And Bart, it's almost mid-December, so it's time to talk about November for the International Grid Chase, if that makes sense. It absolutely does. And uh, here we are, the middle of uh, December already, wrapping up November. We've just come off of a less uh, active uh, period than we might have anticipated. Activity overall was down about 40% from the month of October. But nonetheless, an exciting time. Lots of activity on all the bands, uh, pretty much even reduction in activity. But overall activity on all the bands is looking still great. Did you see any effect from the CW and phone sweepstakes? I think we definitely did. Um, And again, they would be focused just on our primary bands, no work activities during sweepstakes. You know, people were putting in long hours in those events. Two different weekends. We also had an EME contest in the month of November. We had CQ uh, contest in the month of November. So plenty of contesting still going on and still a lot of overall submissions. November submissions were almost exactly the same as October. Uh, 23,500 submissions, still very busy uh, people uploading to Logbook of the World. That's a lot of grids being chased. It is. And again, those are the overall uploads to Logbook with the content that we evaluated for the month of November. Now, speaking of uploads and downloads, uh, we have our certificates that are downloadable now. Is that correct? We do. We've uh, posted to the uh, International Grid Chase website. You'll see now across the tabs available to you of home leaderboard, the next one is certificates. And go ahead and select that, put in your call sign, start to... reducing perhaps the segmenting of which bands or modes you'd like to look at, or you can look at all of them. And then as you go through, you can list up the 16 different rows of detail by band or by mode that may be of interest to you. Better have a lot of ink in the printer then. Definitely. And it will also organize it by rank. So the very first ranking will be the upper left to as many of the displayed month and uh, band rows that you want to show. So even I could print a certificate. Absolutely. For all the grids that I've worked. and It's really all about uploading the logbook of the world. If you've log- uploaded five QSOs or 500,000 QSOs, they are all reported and all available through the certificate process. That's great. Thank you, Bart. Thank you, Steve. Happy holidays. You too. This is the ARRL Audio News Propagation Forecast for Friday, December 14th. Another sunspot appeared, but it didn't last long. By the end of the week, it was gone. Even so, the solar flux index bumped up to about 71, which is always welcomed. As a result, look for DX on 20 and 30 meters during the daylight hours. The last blast of solar wind is behind us, and we have a bit more on the way that will be arriving around December 16th. But don't expect much disruption to the HF bands. In fact, this would be a good time to hunt DX on 160, 80, 60, and 40 meters. On VHF and UHF, the Geminid meteor shower peaks this weekend and then trails off for the next few days. If you have 6 or 2 meter capability, fire up those radios over the next several days.
And that concludes ARRL Audio News for this week. Our thanks to all contributors to this week's report. ARRL Audio News is produced by the American Radio Relay League, the National Association for Amateur Radio. For more information on amateur radio or the ARRL, visit us on the web at ARRL.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for ARRL. If you have a question or comment about ARRL Audio News, email us at audio news at ARRL.org. This program is copyright ARRL, all rights reserved. 73, and thanks for listening. Foundations of Amateur Radio. Recently, I managed to get some quality on-air time when I participated in a contest. This isn't about contesting, although I suppose tangentially it is. It was a most enjoyable experience, shared with some friends, and because we did it at a local radio club, Sunday morning had all manner of visitors joining us for a little social chat. Just the ticket for breaking the monotony of calling CQ. Normally, when I do a contest, I wear headphones. Actually, it's a headset. That is, something over my ears with an attached microphone to capture my contacts without me having to use my hands or move my head towards a fixed location while I'm making the contact. One hour in, my trusty headset broke clean in half. They've been with me since 2012, so I was a little disappointed. They weren't cheap. I'm not going to tell you what brand it is, but they're very popular in the contesting community, and I bought them based on those recommendations. Given that I now had no headset, I immediately went to the nearest social media outlet to ask for recommendations on what to do next. And the typical responses included different brands, ways of repairing, better models, those kinds of things. Everything you'd expect from a community which has some experience in creating a headset that actually works within the context of amateur radio. Don't get me wrong, some of these suggestions were great, but I don't particularly fancy spending $500 on a headset that is suited to listen to glorious HF SSB. If you're not familiar, think long-distance AM radio, playing music you can barely hear, hosted by a DJ you can almost make out. Making a contact using HF SSB is really an exercise in deciphering really bad audio, often with lots of people on the same frequency at the same time, all vying for your attention. Making a contact, a QSO, in that kind of pile-up can be a challenge. The contest ran for 48 hours, so in my downtime I had to come up with a solution, since making a repair within the time available seemed unrealistic, even though I happened to have spare parts somewhere in my shack. As an emergency standby, I brought along my mobile phone in-ear headphones. They're lightweight, cheap, and they block out the audio from nearby conversations in the shack. Everything you want in a contesting headphone. I used a microphone on a boom attached to the desk, but that wasn't ideal. Moving your head, looking at the logging screen, operating the radio, from a user interface perspective, it left me wanting. I should add that I prefer to operate a contest using voice-operated control, or VOX. That is, setting up your radio in such a way that you don't need to push any buttons to talk. You open your mouth, and the radio automatically starts transmitting. Very helpful when you have your hands on the keyboard and the foot pedal is just out of reach or making your leg tired because you have to hold it up so you don't accidentally key up the transmitter. It occurred to me that I'd never seen this particular use of a headphone in the context of amateur radio. After the contest I went out to find a similarly Spartan microphone. I'm still weighing up the options, but I think I might have settled on the idea of pursuing headphones and microphones intended for use on a mobile phone precisely because they're designed to deal with blocking out surrounding audio from both the earpiece and the microphone. As I'm describing this to you, it occurs to me that it doesn't even need to be wired. A simple Bluetooth audio module plugged into the radio with wireless mobile phone headsets might just be the ticket. What has been your recipe for success in creating an environment where you can hear a HF SSB QSO in a contest environment without spending half the value of the radio? I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot Lima, Alpha Bravo. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x, xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts bovenaan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.pa0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen.
De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl.
Ich habe eine Gefahr, Arthur.